guys, it's me, Sugar, and my husband, Jeff, joining us, oh, joining me tonight. Wow, it's off to a rough start. <laughs> well, we, we know people listen, so it is kind of an us. Yes. But just, yes, you and I in terms the of the audience. conversation. Yes. <laughs> um, so tonight we were talking, and uh, we haven't collaborated on this idea at all. We literally said to each other, what are your top tens uh, in regards to anime series, not movies, because that would be a whole nother discussion and we wanted to talk about what would be our number our top tens mm -hmm. um and i we wanted to see if we have ones that collaborate or ones that are totally separate because as we mentioned in other podcasts we watch things together and separately mm -hmm. so i'm not really sure what he's going to bring up i'm sure there's ones i can guarantee will be on his list oh, but yeah. there might be some surprises for me but we'll see i so, mean yeah we you know, we we kind of will peruse. I guess we don't necessarily peruse each other's uh, my anime list uh, all that much. We'll talk about things as we're watching them, and yeah. you know, oh, you know, is that an eight or nine, or is that a five or a two or, or whatever. I'll, I'll watch something and be like, you should really watch it, and he'll be like, okay, and then like a year later, he'll be like, oh yeah, I should have watched that. <laughs> I I don't watch as much anime as you do, but That's okay. you know, it's fine. That's maybe why our lists will be a little different. I would be surprised if there was anything on your list that I haven't seen anything of, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm pretty sure everything on my list is stuff that you have already seen. I would assume so, but you never know. Could be a surprise. Um, and if there's stuff that we've both seen, we can both chime in on each other's and say what we liked, and then I can, or you can reveal where it was on your list. Yeah, yeah. We have a rough kind of hierarchy yeah. where things are and obviously like most anticipating lists will start from the bottom and work our way up um it's because our number one is going to be the same i think no maybe no I, <laughs> we're I'm both giving each other 100%. the shifty eye look of like maybe but uh so we'll start with your number 10 uh my my number 10 um oh, are we going to do honorable mentions first or right towards the end right before number one right before number one i guess Cool. All right, because then we'll, we'll name off a couple of people who are like, oh, maybe it was this, and then, oh my god, it wasn't that. I was just an honorable mention. What a bunch of jerks. <laughs> um, so, uh, full disclosure, everything in my top ten is either rated as a nine or a ten uh, mm -hmm. in, in, on my personal, my anime list. Mm -hmm. I would find it really odd. Some people will, will put, you know, their favorites in, even though they will arguably, like, you know, I don't think, you know, critically speaking, it's the best, but it, it's a favorite of mine. So yeah. that's, you know, that's, I have it up there. I, I don't tend to do that. Yeah. And that's something we kind of glazed over in another podcast. I mean, glazed over in the most, like, <laughs> brief, sense, <laughs> or yeah. brief sense. It's just the fact that I know a lot of people have had complaints over the rating system, especially in um, on MAL, which is my anime list, because a lot of people rate things in the sense of, I love this, therefore it's number one for me. But, like, people like me, who are more analytical, it's kind of like, this is number one for me because it, it did everything on every level for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. You know? And so that's why a lot of people get really angry with others who are like, well, obviously, I'm just going to spew something random. Um, let me think of something just random. Slayers is a 10 because uh, it's it's so great and I think it's the best thing ever. And But objectively myself <laughs> would yeah. say it is not a 10 you cannot compare it to you know x y and z and yeah. they're like well i know and it's like well then we're on two different systems right now then <laughs> yeah there's there's something about being critical and just having your favorites yeah you know the transformers movies make billions of billions yeah. of dollars yeah but that doesn't mean that they're yeah. good movies and don't get me wrong i have guilty pleasures too but I can almost guarantee they will not be on my top ten. <laughs> no, I couldn't imagine. There'll be something I'll have on repeat and, like, sinfully watch all the time. <laughs> so, I mean, that being said, my number ten, um, I spoke uh, in our last podcast at some, somewhat at length about the fact that I feel like Dragon Ball Z mm -hmm. drops the ball a little bit, okay. especially heading into the later seasons. Mm -hmm. However, Dragon Ball... I felt was almost perfect. Oh, that was your number ten. Way. So yeah, my number ten is the original Dragon Ball. Okay. It has it has that perfect mix of uh, of comedy and like seriousness that okay. other other shonen end up you know finding those elements as well. Right. Um, 
it does a very good job of making everybody still relevant towards the end of the series. Right. Yes, arguably Yamcha is basically used as a measuring stick. He's <laughs> For everybody. <laughs> basically, it's like, oh, they beat Yamcha. They're, they're a threat. And so Yamcha, and that's the reason why they make a joke out of it on uh, Dragon Ball Z Abridged, is because, right. you know... Yeah. Yamcha sounds disappointing. But beyond <laughs> Yamcha, and even Yamcha, he wasn't that far behind. But, like, everybody kind of stuck around. They were important. You know, Goku wasn't just this uh, this god, which he is now. Yeah. He wasn't this god that, you know, is fighting against other gods of destruction. People whose job it is to literally destroy parts of the universe. <laughs> you know, it's gotten crazy. There weren't any villains that... The only reason they were relevant was because they were unkillable. You know, it was just strong fighters against strong fighters. And something that I really like is tournament arcs. Mm -hmm. And Dragon Ball basically had it where every second season there was a rather massive tournament arc that I felt was done very well. It put everybody where they were supposed to be. It had very good, uh, very good growth of the characters. Um, and even characters that weren't physically strong like Bulma stayed relevant throughout the entire series so it's it's 10 for me it I rated it as a 9 on my anime list mm -hmm. uh, it's maybe a bit of a personal favorite I can't say that it's a that it's you know a guilty pleasure though because I think it's an excellently crafted shonen there's a reason why all of the big shonens now follow the template that Dragon Ball and then later Dragon Ball Z ended up using Mm hmm Yeah, I... Obviously, this isn't in my top ten. And I say obviously in the sense that I found Dragon Ball... Don't get me wrong. is nostalgic. It's good. It's kind of like we were talking about in one of the other podcasts. It's kind of like one of the early shonen, mm -hmm. And that you're like, yeah, this was my first. This is great. But yada yada. Um, I do find that sometimes with it and why it wouldn't be in my top 10. I do enjoy it. I have watched it. Yeah, um, we watched it together. Yes, many times. Um, I find that one of its problems is, in which I would knock any anime who does it, it just, sometimes things last too long and the pacing's off. And I mean, a little bit. Yeah, and I'd say that's probably my biggest knock because the characters are likable. The artwork was good for its time. Um... I find the stories itself were entertaining, um, but that would probably be, thinking of it right away would be my knock, would be the pacing and the fact that things sometimes took way longer than they needed to. I mean, it, it, it doesn't get to Dragon Ball Z levels of no. ridiculous on, on those terms. <laughs> We've been scarred um, by I'm, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I'm, I'm not familiar as much with the manga, like I never read the original Dragon right. Ball manga, so I'm not sure if there was a lot of filler or anything like that. Uh, they definitely... Because it was serialized and, you know, every yeah. single season had to have a certain number of episodes. Some moments were made to last a little bit longer than they probably needed to be. Uh, on the whole, I never felt it was egregious. It never dampened my joy of what was happening. Whereas I felt with Dragon Ball Z especially, mm -hmm. there were points where during like the Frieza arc where I was like, this is, it's getting to a point where I'm not enjoying it anymore because of how long drawn out it is. And right. I never felt Dragon Ball ever hit that point. Right. And no, it's not as bad as Dragon Ball Z levels, because I found even the filler that was in Dragon Ball, from what I remember, still seemed to flow. It was okay. It's just the fact that it just seemed to have pacing issues as well. Not as horribly horrendous as Dragon Ball Z, let's reiterate that. But, um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't... And it's lots of other... Any anime that gets serialized like this, it usually ends up having that same problem. I mean, even... The original Full Metal Alchemist has got some pacing issues. Right. Um, all of the big ones, I, I would I would argue, uh, to an extent, have some pacing issues. Um, like I don't know. There one... might be one in our list that might not have problems with pacing. <laughs> mm, maybe that's the reason why this is only number 10. Um, I'm teasing. But, uh, yeah, like, One Piece has had its problems. Naruto has had its problems. It becomes part of the issue with being serialized and basically right. being under contract that you have to create a certain number of episodes from 
material right. that maybe doesn't warrant it all the time. And no, that's that's fine because there are other examples of anime that have been reproduced to kind of be more concise and take out some of the filler and some of the extra kind of meat and that's fine it's just the fact that i couldn't objectively call it a 10 because i know it has those issues yeah, of it fine. kind of having repetitive stories repetitive pacing issues um but i can't say that it was a bad choice per se because I know how much you like it. It's obviously mm -hmm. something we, we grew up on. Um, so I'm not going to knock your choice. <laughs> that's what you're expecting. No, that's no, that's fine. One of the reasons why I would say I wouldn't have it on my list. That's it's fine. the same with yeah. most other older stuff. Like even, uh, I guess the most comparable thing would be like Sailor Moon. Would be, obviously it's not a shonen, but I mean in the sense of like having that story, having uh, that ongoing kind of old school I shouldn't say old school, but kind of that 90s kind of story. Even though it was a decent story most of the time, there was that extra pacing issue and so forth. And I wouldn't yeah. say, oh yeah, Sailor Moon's a 10, even though I did enjoy it at the time. And even now, as a guilty pleasure, I watch it. <laughs> not, not Crystal, though. Not, not Crystal. Oh, don't get me started on Crystal. Oh, so nice. then, okay, I'm curious. So what's your, what's your number 10, then? Oh, I don't know. Oh, jeez. Uh, let's get it. <laughs> I, um... I, I started to put my list in somewhat of an order. So at the bottom I have is uh, Usagi Drop. And, uh, I don't know anything about Usagi And that's Drop. okay. A lot of people, um, it was on their radar. Uh, but some a lot of people still haven't heard of it. Um, but it's it's gone up in ranking on MAL. It's, uh, I believe it's 86 right now. It's basically about a 30-year-old uh, bachelor. I won't get into any spoilers. Basically, um, his grandfather dies, and uh, the child that he had, um, basically when he passes away, he decides to take on the responsibility of looking after her. And it's a very sweet, simple story of just somebody kind of having to mature by having this girl in his life, and kind of understanding how parenthood works without ever kind of signing on to be a parent. And it's like a slice of life. Um, it was a very sweet show. The art style was very simplistic. It was very sweet. The lines were very nice. I think the first episode was like the only one where the art style was a little off. But other than that, it's a very sweet story. Um, I know you haven't watched it, so I know you can't really like give me I, your two I, cents. But like what you're explaining to me, I do recall seeing you know some AMVs and some yeah. other stuff on it. Um, I don't know if this is the one that makes everybody cry. I don't No, know. this wasn't one that made you cry so much as it's just like very sweet moments of just looking after a child and making it making you have to grow up. And it's kind of that lifestyle of understanding how much responsibility a child is and what role you have in their world. And I really like that about the anime. It's not a it's as Jeff knows about me, it takes a lot for me to give it a 10. But in ratings wise, it's higher up for me. Um, yeah, I just liked it a lot. Um, it's adapted from a manga. I never read the manga. Just the anime itself was very sweet, and I really liked it. And yeah, <laughs> I don't fair. have a lot to expand on because it is a very simplistic story. Um, I'd recommend you watching it. I won't say I don't remember crying. It's just a very sweet story about basically understanding what growing up means, what sacrifices you have to make to make someone else happy. Um, and yeah, I really liked it. <laughs> gotcha. I get them. That's, you know, it's um, a slice of life. I'm not the biggest on slice of life. Yeah, as we've so, discussed before. But that's, that's okay. Uh, that's do we, do we want to switch it around now and you give me your number nine? My number nine, I would have to say my guilty pleasure and something that I can critically say that I love, because I've broken it apart for several people about why I liked it so much, is Noragami. And mm -hmm. I would say the second season I liked more than the first, because there's a lot more I can say that I liked about it. Um, basically, it's about um, gods and their regalia, and then them living in the human world. And the artwork I love, the color schemes I love, they're like just instances of like just if you grab a scene from most of like any of the action shots it can be like a screensaver it's very beautiful um the close-ups and uh action shots are very good second season especially there's a lot more fighting 
and a lot more character development for a lot of the people that we grew to love in the first season. And we see that a lot of characters, even gods, have flaws and the fact that they too have fears. And then, of course, I can say the second season is a little tear worthy. <laughs> yeah, the, you, uh, you cried a little bit. Yeah. And, then a and little more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And because I know you watched the second season with me. The yeah. first one you saw half. Um, yeah, I kind of watched peripherally and then it was like, <laughs> well, things would kind of catch my attention and I'd be like, what? what's going on there? And so you'd explain it to me because you were like, you're not really going to watch it. I was like, eh, I mean, probably not. Yeah. But uh, so I, I got what was going on. Yeah. And then I watched the second season because I was like, that actually seems cool. It seems neat. And as I've said to you before and you hear me listening to it all the time the soundtrack is really great i know they got into troubles with it because um especially the second season because it had uh noises over the soundtrack that were um well, of course i can't think of it now basically taken from another culture and it was seen as disrespectful sort of thing yeah but um anywho the music's really great the action scenes are really great um yeah there's a lot to love about it in my opinion um from what you saw in the second season, do you agree or disagree? Uh, yes, I think that... Yes, uh, you're okay. <laughs> yes, uh, both. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't make my top ten. That's okay. Um, but I will say that uh, the, the fact that it's probably not getting a third season sucks. Uh, it I, sucks I was, for me, yeah. I, I was wanting to see more. Uh, it had some really good... Um, we were talking the other day about uh, action scenes, just some of our favorite action scenes. Yeah. We said that this, in particular, the second season maybe has your favorite action scene of any anime ever, potentially. Yeah, if you see any scene, it would be the one between Bishamon and Yato. Uh, they have a fight together, um, and you see that it's not just something that's spurred on now. It's something from the past um, that is kind of invested in this fight that makes it all the more raw, um, which I really liked. And there's different things about the fight that I really like, and which I've broken down to Jeff <laughs> many times of why yeah. I like it so much. I I don't. Again, it's not on my top ten. I don't. I don't. Just you know, for argument's sake, I don't necessarily see how it is better than something like the original Dragon Ball. Um, oh really? <laughs> I mean, it's like a darker yeah. move. No, I'm just I'm putting my cards on the table. Where okay, I, I I view it as as a shonen because I think that is how I would how I would classify it for the most part. Are you talking about Noragami? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A Noragami, it's a I would definitely as a sh as a shonen. The only thing I could say is due to the brevity of it, the fact uh -huh. that it wasn't serialized for as many episodes as Dragon Ball, everything. Uh, the pacing uh -huh. is very quick, which is something I think you appreciate maybe a little bit more I than like I do. The pacing not that not not that it was like it was too fast, but it's all killer no filler. I guess you could say. I guess that's something uh, you'll find about a lot of the things I like. The exception being slice of life is usually I like shows that have the ability to be faster paced. And be able to tell the story I want. Not in a rush sense, but in a way that it's like, I know it'll be up on my list, but I, so I'll bring it up now, is Bacchanal. <laughs> I don't need to for every example, is the fact that it's, it basically knows how to keep its pacing so that you stay interested. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like Noragami in that sense. Uh, there's a few times in the first season I can say it's guilty of it. But the second season, the part where it slows down, it's the part where you're meant to feel upset. And I can appreciate that. And then when it starts stepping up again, you're like, holy smokes, there's a lot at stake here. And that's something I liked about Noragami. And the artwork itself, if you just pull any scene up, you'll be like, wow, that's pretty. Even the openers, listen to the openers for either season, Noragami the first season or Aragato for the second. Really good. And I know you can't disagree with me on that because we have them yeah. playing all the time. <laughs> no, it's, it does have an excellent soundtrack. Uh, maybe that's one area where it would maybe beat out the original Dragon Ball. The fact that the original Dragon Ball is from the mid-80s. And I find it hard to compare. Because I can say the artwork's better, but this is a different time. I can say the pacing's better, but it was more concise. I don't even know if I would say I, I like the artwork in Noragami better. I like Kira Toriyama's style. Well, Kira Toriyama's style is very... Iconic. Iconic. Can I say that? Yeah. 
Yeah. Especially like in, uh, what was it, uh, we were talking about Dragon Age the other day? Not Dragon Age, um... Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is, uh, uh Akira Toriyama. Yeah, and, uh, we were also talking about, um... I'm forgetting the game now. It's the other game you play that he has artwork in. Oh, Dragon Quest. Thank you, I was about to say, I was like, I can't think of the name, it's like Dragon Quest. Where it's, it's like, as soon as you see the artwork, you're like, that's him. Yeah. You just know instantly. And it's not that you dislike the artwork, I just mean it's something that it's very simplistic versus something more detailed and more color enhanced and the saturation and so forth mm -hmm. um in that regards nothing against his artwork though i am a fan uh, but anyways i think we've said enough about noragami what's your number nine my number nine is the <laughs> number seven ranked uh anime on my anime Ooh, list what and is it? it's not yet completed for us so it's uh, one that's actually I, on the go I and think that would I know. be hunter hunter you know, I was thinking about honestly putting it on the list, but I was like, oh, I had this list before. Maybe I should keep it because there was a reason for it. And we haven't finished Hunter x Hunter, and I never like putting things in my top ten that I haven't finished. So, but I can totally understand. Sorry, go ahead. Tell us why. I It just, it hits a lot of the same sort of principles that uh, that I really like just about a good shonen in, in general, mm -hmm. uh, which is that characters are inherently... Um, most of our characters anyways right. are inherently fairly equal but it has a very good uh, i think gigguk was talking about it i don't know if that's how you pronounce his name yep. i apologize if that wasn't it gigguk either uh, way we're fans but uh <laughs> he was talking about it it creates a very excellent uh power system Dra dragon ball is all about you know it's a, it's key everything is, is about key energy and so it's very kind of black and white you have more key you win here you've got a bunch of different types of essentially energy manipulation that are all happening at once right. and none of them are inherently more or less powerful than the other mm -hmm. they are just different approaches to combat and to life in general right. and so i love the fact that it isn't just you know this person has more power than this person therefore a is greater than b right it's like, no it, it it's more complex uh, so that makes it a lot more interesting just in terms of watching the combat happen. Um, Hisoka is one of my favorite villains. Even I it, love him. I mean, at this point, I guess you can't call him an anti-hero. You can't even necessarily call him a villain. He he exists. He's <laughs> he's 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 almost like like a force of nature. Where he <laughs> just he just exists, and his whole idea is, I want to fight people that are really strong. There isn't anything inherently good or evil about it. I just want to fight them, and I will go to whatever lengths I have to in order to fight these really strong people. Mm -hmm. So he's fought people who are, you know, our, our typical heroes. He's fought people who are our typical villains. He just wants to. Maybe, you know, see some interesting stuff, fight some interesting people, learn how to be the best. That's Hisoka. And then there's other villains who have other, you know, nefarious uh, ideas behind them. There are some who just, they're just jerks. You know, it it's a very complex world that exists and our main storytelling is just done through mm -hmm. two people who... From what I can tell, from what I can gather, mm -hmm. they are never going to have the Goku and Vegeta complex. Where, if you're not Gon or, um, oh my goodness, I'm blanking on his name. Oh, Kilawa? Yeah. If you're not Gon or Kilawa, you're nothing. Mm -hmm. Dragon Ball Z ran into that problem. Naruto ran into that problem. Lots of different anime run into that issue. And it doesn't feel like that's ever going to happen with Hunter x Hunter. Um, where we are right now, I can honestly say um, what you said is how I feel as well. Uh, Hisoka, I would definitely say, is a villain. He's done some pretty bad things. <laughs> even from what people have said, he's done some bad things, even if it's at his own, like, you know, like, omission I... to... He's, like, hurt people badly and, like, killed them to kind of just make a point, uh, as far as I, <laughs> I remember. So I would definitely say he's a villain. Uh, and he's definitely all about himself, even though he shows intrigue in the boys and not in like an in a, <laughs> in a really like fighting way. And yeah. it's, um, yeah, even though that's, some of the scenes are uh, 
odd. Uh, let's just say it at that. Um, but you can look those up by what I mean. But anyways, uh, I like that there is kind of like in video games where there's like a spider web of how things work. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Ironic spiders. Uh, I guess you'll know when you watch it. But anyways, <laughs> just kind of like how everything kind of spans out where it's like, okay, if you have this ability, then you should be able to do these things. And then if you do this, that means that it works against this other ability where things are well explained in the sense of how things should work in the sense of like, okay, if you have this ability, you should have an upper hand on this kind of person. Say mm-hmm. like somebody who's a trans, uh, what's it called? An enhancer or somebody who has another ability that is on the opposite side of the spectrum, so to speak. Um, it does a very good job as well of creating essentially mythical people who seem to somehow break the rules. Cause we were yeah. discussing it earlier with a certain character and I still, don't understand how his <laughs> how how their abilities work right. and how they can almost break the very laws that that the world are predicated on mm-hmm. but then that's the reason why this person is so a great. mythical yeah. person like everybody's heard of them everybody's like oh my god this person is above and beyond what we even understand is possible with nen that's that their power. It's key in uh, in Dragon Ball Z. It's Here's like Nen. Ren, Nen, and basically all the kind of uh, abilities, auras, and kind of powers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember. But even though I like that because you were confused about this character, and I won't get into who it was, but I like that I was able to explain it to you because I'm like, well, because of X, Y, and Z, this makes sense. You know, it's not just he is what he is because of this. It's like, oh, well, yes, this is this. And within the because rules, of within the rules, given. yeah, within it's the rules possible. we're given, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I understand like everything so far. And another thing I appreciate about things that usually make it into my top ten or even my top twenty are things that try and make sense of the world that it is. It's mm-hmm. not just this is what it is and people just kick ass because they can. It's like, well, they have to have these abilities, they have to have these precursors, they have to be able to do this, they have to build up this ability. You know what I mean? And so I appreciate that. I also like that our main characters are very likable. They're driven by different goals. We've seen them come together and separate many times for their own kind of objectives, um, which I really like. So I understand that. Not on my list, like I said, not usually unless I'm finished it, but it, I can see it definitely making it, creeping onto my top 10 list in the near future. It's already on nine. My, <laughs> my number eight is 100% on your list because you already said it was. <laughs> my my number eight uh-huh. is Bacchino. Oh, it's so low! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so low. It's my eighth favorite anime of all time. I, I'm a I heathen. Guess, I guess in my mind, I'm like, I've done so many like critical analysis just like, Obviously, I've only done one on the channel, but like to my husband and to other people, where it just blows my mind. I'm like, how can you not find it that awesome? Uh, mine, I have it ranked at number three, and that's yeah, okay. I, I knew you would have yours higher, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Let's no, hear why I really you think Bakano is eighth. Um, I'd it's, love to hear <laughs> why it's only eighth. Is that is that yes. what I'm trying to argue yes. here? Yes. Um, I feel I will well, argue you. <laughs> You you have argued about pacing before. The problem that I have mm. when you... And it's the same thing people who love video games will hate the fact that I didn't like Final Fantasy VI as much as a lot of other people. There are too many characters. And mm-hmm. so it forces me to watch stuff about people who I don't care about. Mm-hmm. And especially when you only get... How many? Like 16... Episodes, uh, if you count the if you count like the OVAs, well, and stuff if you like count that. the OVAs and stuff, and then also they've had um, some special. Sorry, my on. phone is just kind of going berserk right now. Um, I think, wow, I watched it how many times and I can't even think. I want to say it's twelve. And then plus the OVA, the OVAs, wowzers! It is another um, another three or four. Three? It's okay. The first the, the season is thirteen. And the OVAs is another three, so 16. Ah, I, had it, I, I had it right. I, I had to start. think. Nice. Um, <laughs> In your face. <laughs> they end up focusing on characters that I don't like as much, and then that removes their ability to focus on characters that I really, really wanted more on. Mm-hmm. 
and that would be my main issue. The fact that I couldn't name you all of the characters now, I think that shows why. But as great as it was, mm -hmm. it, it it can't be higher than this. Mm. Is I can <laughs> for spoilers for something else that's going to pop up on the list. Mm. I can name you all the main characters in Cowboy Bebop. I well, couldn't. There I aren't couldn't. a lot, so let's get that clear. You should focus more on a smaller cast than having essentially one episode per character. Okay. No, that's no. that's my critical analysis. <laughs> I love when when it hits. It hits really hard. It's really good. It has exceptionally good combat scenarios. I don't. I, I feel sometimes mm. it's a little clunky when it brings in the mystical, the, the essentially magical elements. Right. I almost would have appreciated it more had they gone just simply for the straight sort of gangster story. Right. As opposed to bringing in this mystical element that exists. Um, so that would be the reason why I don't have it rated as a 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. I have that again as a 9. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it could have been a 10. It could have been a lot better. If you would have cut, let's say, three. Three mm -hmm. of those characters and then focused more on, you know, like Jacuzzi. Mm -hmm. I wanted more time with Jacuzzi. And I didn't get as much as I wanted. I see. <laughs> and so that's, that's the problem that you run into when you have so many characters. Uh -huh. Even if you think that you've hit them all really well, at least for me, uh -huh. some of them were a miss. So I'll start off by saying I love you. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm I kidding. love you too. No, I'm teasing. Um, I can understand why it's not for everybody, as most things are. Um, I find that, uh, especially if you're watching it for the first time, it's hard not to watch it and not binge it because there is so much going on. And I know with you especially, you like to do other things while you're watching anime. Not as a, like, a passive viewer, but in the sense you're like, I'm just going to grab a bite. And like that's almost impossible if you're just watching it. Um, you basically have to stop it, leave the room, come back, start it up again. Um, but I can understand why it's not for everybody. It's very fast-paced, but that's something I appreciate. Not for mm -hmm. everybody. Um, why mine's at number three, and I've gone through so many reasons uh, just in passing and in the critical analysis and so forth. What I love a lot about it is it really there's so much to it and that's something i appreciate it's like no matter how many times you look at it there's always something else i can honestly say when i first watched it and i can still say to this day the only kind of clunky part and it's very minor is kind of the part where uh no spoilers where they go back to the very furthest point in the story i'll say that without uh spoiling anything is that it's kind of happens suddenly rather than most of the time skips and so forth happen very fluidly. Um, has some fluidity, I mean, sorry. And I love the characters. I love everything about it. I love how each one of them has their own kind of development, even if it's short term. We understand who these characters are and what they're driven by. Uh, especially one of my favorites is Claire, like the rail tracer. And um, I won't say anything, but there's a lot, like there's a lot of depth to these characters. And even like if you watch it as many times as I have, which is probably an unhealthy amount. It's, uh, there's so many speeches that even if they seem very insignificant, you rewatch it and you're like, wow, that was really powerful or that meant a lot to what's going on or what will be going on. Um, and again, I find it very ballsy that they put the ending first and then go from there. Um, I love the animation for the time. It was very lovely. Uh, the music, the soundtrack was bitchin'. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to it all the time. It, it, I never get sick of rewatching it. It has lots of rewatchability. Um, there's like almost nothing that I can say really bad about it. Um, and you can't make me. Just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, I, I have it at I'm, my I'm eight teasing. Spots. I'm teasing. <laughs> but uh, it has a lot, a lot to love about it. And uh, I'll leave that there. If you have any questions, I am the book. <laughs> All I can say is well, I recommend so it highly. Book. It's based on a manga. Oh, I haven't uh, had the opportunity to read all of it yet because I've been so busy with other things. But um, I do intend on it because I'm doing, doing more kind of... I know I should be getting into the manga of something when I'm reading like other articles about the manga <laughs> to fill some gaps for me. And I'm like, oh, that's where it's going. Um, 
so I know I will be reading it. So as for, I guess you did yours, my next one, I guess, would be uh, Natsume's uh, Book of Friends. And I brought that up several times. Yeah, and it's doesn't, not... Doesn't make my list. I was about to list. say, it's not for everybody. I just find it's kind of an amalgamation, and I say it to every single person I watch, it's kind of like a hot chocolate on a, on a rainy day. It just feels comforting. Where even a lot when it of, makes you weep. Even when it makes me weep. <laughs> because the stories are so sweet and sincere, and it's something you can relate to. It's not... Even though you're dealing with yokai and different characters and... Uh, like, one of my favorite characters of all time, like, top ten is Madara. Or, um, um, what was I going to say? Nyanko Sensei. Um, and I just love his whole character. I love their dynamic. I love the music. The art style is very lovely. It's soft. Um, it's very, like, comforting to watch. And I've gotten you to watch uh, a couple seasons. You haven't watched all of them. I think I'm like, I'm either one and a half or two and a half. I think I might be you, two and a half seasons in. You are one and a half seasons in. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> and, and that's okay. It's it's fine. It's enjoyable. I think I would I gave it maybe like an eight. Uh, again, I don't like Slice of Life. Yeah. And this, again, is one of those issues of pacing where... You, where you you like I said, it's one of the times. To, yeah, you, it gets a break for me. Slice of life, I can get it, I can let it get away with slower pacing because it's kind of, and I've I've uh, commented on some it's of the about seasons, the journey, not the destination. Some of the seasons I have ragged on for certain scenes, um, and even parts of seasons where people have gotten their hands on it, and it's just the pacing wasn't right, and it still has to have consistent pacing. And to kind of feel those really sincere moments. I feel like that kind of pacing, the slower pacing has to be there. Um, to kind of get that slow burn of what you want. Mm -hmm. And even there's episodes that you watched that made you cry. <laughs> so yeah. It's not like it didn't accomplish what it meant to do. And uh, my opinion about the manga especially is if it was able to make me cry in the manga, the anime should be able to do it as well. Mm -hmm. And that lets me know that the season's doing well. Is like if it can't make me cry, it wasn't as good as the manga, which lets me know that something's wrong. And that was with the not the most recent season, but the season before where I knew season five, I yeah, think, yeah. Uh, where things kind of hit the fan a bit. Um, but every everything else has been really good. Yeah, I just I oh, I guess it. I should give I... some premise. Sorry, before uh, it's about this guy who is able to see yokai and runs into a kind of a um, lucky charm cat who has the um, the uh, spirit of a um, I guess I don't know how to explain it it's kind of like a yokai as well but a very powerful one and he kind of protects Natsume um, because he plans to get the book of friends um, at some point but you see as the story goes on that objectives and goals start to change and we see the character development and uh, it's very sweet yeah i i liked the idea of you know again uh villains and villainy happening mm -hmm. and they gave you little clues that maybe something was going to be going on mm -hmm. and then they would drop it entirely for essentially like a season it mm -hmm. felt like uh so that was where i had my pacing problems mm -hmm. um and maybe that does improve a little bit as you move on. Mm -hmm. But definitely for the first season and a half, I was already to the point where I, where I wanted some sort of, not even closure, just yeah, some sort of can... indication of what was actually going to be happening beyond, here's, here's a story. Here's another story about a different yokai. Here's another one. Right. Yeah, and I would liken it in some ways to... Um, Oddly enough, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Not, <laughs> no, no. Hear me out. Just okay, in, in terms of Buffy, to me, got really good mm -hmm. when they stopped being a monster of the week mm -hmm. and started having the overarching themes and like uh, episodes that would run into each other and you know have a essentially like a big plot for the entire season mm -hmm. and. I just didn't feel like that was coming at all mm -hmm. with Natsume. And I was like, okay, here's another yokai. It's the yokai of the week. The story usually is, is pretty good. Sometimes it'll get better than, you know, pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
I just wanted to get to, you know, what is the point of season one versus season two versus season three? Right. If all it is is every episode features a different yokai and here's their story. Mm-hmm. You know, why even have it? Why even have it be different seasons if there isn't something different happening, if there isn't a different arc happening? And I'm sure, you know, that does happen. You've told me that it that does come <laughs> along. I was about but to say, it's well. <laughs> very slow paced on that front. I can honestly say, yes, we're on the. Well, obviously, we finished the sixth season. And there are still big questions that haven't been answered, but it's the same with the manga. It is a very slow burn. We do have an underlying story, but the story is more about the adventure and getting to that character yeah. development. And it's how... about the journey, not the destination. Yes. And so you have to go into it being okay with not getting answers right away. Six seasons and some of the biggest questions haven't been answered, but it's kind of a satisfying weight in the sense of it's just so pretty and there's so many characters and there's so much development and it's understanding kind of like just understanding yourself of what you're looking for in life what kind of friends you're looking for what your friends kind of say about you and so forth um i just find a lot of the sorts short stories are very lovely yeah well, that's, of, that's fair. And it's yeah, it's one of the few exceptions where <laughs> one of the slow burns that gets me. It's fair. I guess uh, number seven for you. Number seven. Yeah. What? <laughs> I think we I think we were on number eight there, if I'm not mistaken. So now I'm just reading from my list. I didn't have them in exact order, so I was like, was it okay? Um, no, we were we're jumping to seven now. Okay, so we did Don Sway's Book of Friends. Um, so I guess my next one, it's just because it's been a while, is Cowboy Bebop. See that 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 <laughs> chaps that chaps me a little that bit that you me. have it at number seven, Cowboy Bebop. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> For how high highly you rank Bacano and how it uh, takes some inspiration in some regards. What? What inspiration? I would love to know what part of Bacchano was taken from Cowboy Bebop. Music. Oh my god, that's the only thing. And it's not like taken from it. There's other people that started doing jazz. <laughs> like, get I'm just, real. I'm, I'm just saying. Mm, it's yeah, definitely mm, yeah, there. Yeah. A lot of the fight choreography is very similar to what Cowboy Bebop does. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. saying. But... That's there's okay. fight choreography, there's different fighting styles. Never mind. Not gonna get into it. Go on. Okay. Uh, just for reference, uh -huh. I have Cowboy Bebop as number two. Yeah. And for me, it's kind of been... I, I find it funny that we just basically switch those two on yeah. our lists. I and have Bachno a little lower, you have Cowboy Bebop a little lower. Yeah. And it's more of like a time thing for me. Like, Cowboy Bebop's always been really good. But the more I watched it, like, don't get me wrong, I still watch it a lot. I haven't been lately, but, like, it's one of those things where the more I watch it, I'm like, well, it did have those issues. You know what I mean? Where I'm like, right. I wasn't a huge fan of the uh, drug episode. I wasn't a huge fan of, like, some of the slower pacing in it. But I'm not saying it was bad by any means, because obviously it's on my list. There's a lot to love about it. And, I mean, you... I think you've made it, uh, at least to me, you've made it clear that you're not necessarily the biggest fan of this genre in, in general, the, um, the space the space western. A lot of the space, kind of, for anything, uh, I find it really has to, again, kind of pick up the pace for me, uh, just because you're in outer space. It's a lot of nothingness and a lot of just dialogue. And it's nothing's wrong with dialogue. I just mean for me to be, like, thoroughly kind of involved in it i would like it to be a little more see and I, f I feel that cowboy bebop utilizes that that emptiness in a way to examine the characters more strongly because in comparison to mm. something like like firefly let's say firefly uh, spends a lot me. of time uh you know in, in the reaches of space and trying to be away from you know Sorry, the hiccups <laughs> away from the hustle and bustle a lot of Cowboy Bebop, yes, it takes place in space, but mm -hmm. a lot of it, you know, they're landing on, on Mars or other places to go get a bounty. Right. And so I would say in comparison to other space operas 
or space westerns, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't spend a very long time, you know, in in space. So I think it uses that that time very very well to kind of slow everything down because Cowboy Bebop, if you didn't have those moments, it is very fast moving. It is extremely quick. It. I don't find that though. I find that there's a lot of lingering moments of like I can remember like specifically shots of like uh, just shots of Ein or shots of Spike being like in on blah, 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 uh, being in bandages on the couch and kind of having that that shot of him there. And I know it's kind of like lingering moments, but even moments where it just kind of seems very slow. And nothing's wrong with having slower, as we mentioned before. But I mean, in the sense of like. There's so many moments that it's fast paced that I find that, how can I explain it? There's so much quality in Cowboy Bebop and yet I'd like it to stay at that same kind of height, so to speak, at that mm. same kind of tempo. Like, I'd like it to be like the music, let's do it that way. Whereas that same kind of tempo where you're jazzed the whole way through. Whereas Cowboy Bebop, I'm like, yeah, that was really awesome. That was really great. Oh, I love that fight scene. Oh, that was great. And then it's kind of like, okay. And now we're calm, and now we're gonna do some dialogue, and you know, you name it. And then obviously the drug episode, I'm not a fan of because I, <laughs> I never That's see fair. a point in those episodes in any anime. But um, but I'm not saying it's bad. It's on my top yeah. ten list. I love the characters. I love Faye so much. I want to, <laughs> you know, as much as anybody, I want to cosplay as her at some point. Um, I love the characters. I love the ending. Even though you know some people complain about the ending, I love it. I love the, the colors. Was brilliant. I love the colors. I love the angles. I love a lot about it. But it has it, it has arguably the best fight choreography of any anime. Oh yeah, ever. and it's obviously um, translated to other works that have been done by the same fellow, and I'm blanking okay. on the name on the name right now. But um, the same kind of works because you see it in Sham blah, Samurai Shampoo. You see it in the movie. You see it in other um, anime that he had his hands on. Every kind of choreography he touches is basically gold. Mm -hmm. So I knew I would love it right away. Like the movie, I can say I love more choreography-wise, but both are still really good. Um, yeah. I, so I think over I... time it's just kind of been like... It's kind of like an old Western show, obviously. But I mean in the sense of like, I'll put it on and kind of be like, yeah, those were good times. But I wouldn't... <laughs> It's just kind Good of as time's gone on. It's just been like times. I see. I I, I guess still I, love. I still love the characters. I love the story. I love the ending. I love a lot about it. I, I think just, I just I appreciate the genre a little bit more and what they're trying to do with it. I get it. I liked Firefly a lot more than you did. I'm right. enjoying Farscape a lot more than than you have been thus far. You know, it's. I think it's, it's not that I don't genre, like I it again. I liked all the things you've mentioned. It's just the sense of like some episodes I find that really lag because it's space. So you're bound in this enclosed area where usually more dialogue happens because there's not much else to do in an enclosed space other than, well, dialogue. <laughs> or watching people play cards or smoke or you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But it's like, yeah. I just, I, I guess I don't get why certain, certain things get a pass on those slow moments where Kelly Bebop feel, doesn't for you. For me, with, say for example, Natsume, I feel like the slowness and the pacing makes you understand Natsume as a character and the fact of how his loneliness has been for many years and the fact that he's had no friends and the fact that he can relate to some of these yokai because they've been just as lonely. And you get this feeling of how this longing is for some people where they've been so affected by somebody who has been in their life and you have this slower pacing because you get to understand this person more carefully just by watching these movements whereas in cowboy bebop i find with the where we have our slower moments it's just kind of like i do find that it emphasizes kind of like okay this is our breather this is our downtime it's kind of boring but it doesn't do much for me in the sense of it slow pacing so think I would argue that, critically speaking, and I mean, I'll, I'll talk. I'm not saying it's bad. No. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's clear. This is, this is my number two, so that's why I'm, I'll take a little bit of time to, to discuss it. Yes. I think that you need that breather because they're taking you as the viewer mm -hmm. and trying to put you in the, in the same shoes as everybody on the Bebop, where, right. you know, uh, their lives, Spike in particular, 
if he's not on some, you know, in some fight or whatnot, it feels very empty. Mm-hmm. Their lives, and that that's where I think the, the, the sub-story with Faye ends up hitting you really hard is that... And that works well for me, her story, mm-hmm. because the pacing works well at that time. See, and I Whereas think that the, that's, that's where they're, that's what they're trying, they're trying to make you feel almost, not necessarily uneasy, but almost like they're purposefully trying to make you feel almost bored in a sense because that's how the characters are feeling right now Mm -hmm. they're not doing anything they are merely existing in this same area that they're always existing in their lives are and then that that's where you kind of get that poignant pause where you start to think like their their lives are inherently they're, they're not great lives to live in all honesty they're bounty hunters and in our minds oh that that's awesome that's cool they get to go off and fight all these people and they get to go on these adventures a lot of it is just waiting for the adventure to come to them and then once you kind of see what's happened in the series and why everybody is in those positions you see that the life they led before what we think of all the adventures Mm -hmm. that was the true adventure and that's what they've lost and so those times when they aren't you know fighting somebody it's it is there it's slow it is plotting but it's it's done for a purpose and i think that it makes me appreciate uh you know the action a little bit more it makes me makes me understand why those characters and spike is a little different because he's always kind of gravitated towards a life of you know action and, and and combat and whatnot but even somebody like jet why they would really appreciate uh the insanity that comes with their with their job but even then i don't feel like when you say the word insanity it doesn't reach levels of insanity for what i'd expect for them to be doing as bounty hunters i what good what do you mean what it's the kind of stuff they have to do is absolutely nuts in terms of what we think of but they're a bounty hunter i don't expect I expect exactly what I saw. Obviously, especially in this whole environment that's unlike our own, so to speak. I do expect these things. And I expected it to be even taken further at some points where it wouldn't be just a simple gunfight, where it wouldn't be just a simple, like... uh, That's what I mean. I feel like the pacing could have been throughout where I felt kind of a lot more action and a lot more... That's just what I feel. I feel like you're stretching a lot for what the quieter moments are especially like what would be your emphasis on the drug fueled episode what did that accomplish I, in the end i feel that it accomplishes um the goal of more introspection of the characters and what they fear and what because essentially like that yes it the mushrooms uh you know made them see all sorts of weird uh, weird stuff and right. there's a lot of symbolism in that episode that I would need to I need to rewatch it again to break down everything, but I felt the entire time that it was showcasing things that they feared and that they were worried about in their life mm-hmm. because essentially we haven't seen to that point even somebody like Faye who we know is, is tragically flawed in some ways, we'd never seen a sensitivity in them. We hadn't seen that you know, of course they're afraid of something. Spike you would have never thought was afraid of anything, but you definitely see through you know the the drug episode as you call it you know what 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 things scare him what things really impact him in the deep recesses of his mind that everybody just kind of hides because we're all bounty hunters we're all here jet in particular mentions all the time to Faye and then spike sometimes where he's like we're not friends we work together we're co-workers we are you know kind of screwed together we're not necessarily so that they don't open up to each other and so this is our avenue to see more into their personal psyche i think i would disagree (laughs) i also find that other episodes uh show if you watch closely characters weakness especially faye um faye they, they spend a lot of time on just because she is her transformation as a character was the most um notable yeah it was the most abrupt just due to the situations in which she was placed in. Right. You know, Jet is doing a similar job in a way to what he was doing before, 
and Spike basically is just doing whatever whatever he can to fulfill his uh, almost death wish in a way at this point but I don't, we don't need to talk more about it. We'll <laughs> let people watch it. I'm assuming, yeah, it could get really in-depth. But uh, anyways, it is on my top ten, just lower because of the reasons mentioned. And uh, I think this would be a perfect time to maybe take a break, kind of re kajigger ourselves, and we'll be right back. Sounds good. See you in a few minutes. 